Hi, I'm Mark Allen, co-founder of K3. In some of our other presentations, we have discussed the growth potential of federal contractors, how to increase your valuation, and the components of a growth strategy. In this presentation, we want to dig into a topic that always seems to capture attention, and that is capital. Although we view capital as just one component of growth, we do realize that having cash on hand is typically one of the largest concerns facing a company. And when it comes to corporate expansion, having proper funding is absolutely critical for long-term success. Even the most profitable of companies cannot get to the next level without addressing capital concerns. We're not taking anything away from organic growth, but if you want your company to confidently get to the next level and eventually be a strong force in your industry, you should be looking outside your own ability to get there. In almost every situation, the number one concern or even barrier towards corporate growth is an adequate funding solution. Having worked in the federal sector for over a decade, we have noticed an abundant need for smaller contractors to address capital concerns. Several reasons are that, one, because of the government's payment process, managing costs become very difficult with 60 or 90 day terms. Two, opportunities such as contracting vehicles can yield very high revenue, but the procurement process may take months or even years to close. And three, being a smaller business is ideal for winning awards in the government, but a company's size typically prohibits it from possessing sizable amounts of cash on hand. In comparison with other companies in the commercial sector, K3 believes that contractors are typically the most reliable to invest in and are often in ideal situations to move to the next level. Most are profitable, have little to no debt, stable revenue, and have an existing corporate structure to build from. However, almost all smaller contractors have little to no knowledge of funding structures or the investment community in general, which inhibits their ability to obtain the necessary growth capital. Speaking from experience, I am always astounded when I attend a conference or exhibit for small federal contractors, and it's always the same type of financial exhibitors there. Typically a bank or some type of institution offering the same kinds of services, whether it's factoring, lines of credit, purchase order financing, collateralized loans, you name it. There is a complete absence of any kind of equity-based groups or something outside of the norm. As a business owner, I'm well aware of the necessity of having options like lines of credit and the role they play in conducting operations, but those types of transactions will do virtually nothing for growth or corporate expansion. So now, I would like to unveil just a couple options you may not be thinking of and the pros and cons of each. Fundamentally, there are two ways to receive capital, through debt or equity. Capital from debt is the most common method for smaller businesses because funding is typically easier to come by and a company does not have to give up any ownership. These are stereotypical transactions just as I mentioned. Now although funding can be much easier to get, by nature debt financing yields very little money. It's rare a company could even get a million dollars through a debt transaction, especially if they're a services company. Additionally, the other big drawback is that you have to pay the money back. If your profit margins are small, this could create a serious burden on cash flow, especially in the event of an unforeseen circumstance. Now let's talk about capital from equity. Acquiring capital from equity is often seen as highly advantageous for companies seeking considerable growth because it usually yields a much higher investment. In addition, it's always nice to take some of your chips off the table and use other people's money to expand your company. The biggest negatives of this structure stem from traditional funding sources such as venture capital firms and private equity groups, whereby it is quite typical the funding institution will finance the deal, however at a cost of something over 50% of ownership. And even worse, most of the time they are required to take over control. This is virtually a non-starter for smaller contractors because you need to maintain that 51% equity stake and do not want to give up command authority of your company. So even though the initial financial benefit may be much larger, an equity structure through institutions may hinder a company's return in the long run. So I'm sure you're asking, well what do I do? What are my options? Well, one strategy that K3 highly recommends for significant long-term growth and value appreciation is taking your company public through an IPO. But we fully appreciate and have experience that that strategy is a big step and likely a little too far out of the box for most smaller contractors. If you'd like to know more, I do talk about IPOs and other presentations and the advantages that strategy can have on growth. The other option K3 recommends and actually utilizes in our own growth models is to raise expansion capital through crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is relatively new, however it is gaining significant traction because it can offer necessary capital for minority stakes in a company. And most of the time this can be done fairly quickly. Now if you're thinking about it, please get your mind off of places like Kickstarter because that's not what I'm talking about. 
We do not recommend seeking investment from any Joe off the street willing to put in $10. Instead, there are numerous platforms or other models a company can use whereby they are soliciting investment to individuals who are typically business savvy and can offer a sizable amount of funding. In the U.S. alone, there are thousands upon thousands of high net worth individuals seeking investment opportunities to expand their portfolio just beyond public stock. Many are seeking to get into a company very early on the off chance that it might be the next Facebook or revolutionary software product and make a huge return. The probability of every investment making a return is very, very low. However, there is that long shot that there will be a diamond in the rough that makes it all worth it. They just have to put more lines in the water. So with crowdfunding, instead of making a one-time investment of 500000 into a single private company, a person can instead put that money into dozens of opportunities to increase their probability of return. K3 feels that smaller contractors are very appealing to investors because you take a lot of that risk out of the equation. You already have a management infrastructure, you're not working in the red, you're profitable now, not three years from now, you already have a solid customer base, and you offer a platform that has a distinct probability for appreciation. So crowdfunding can provide a company with significant expansion capital without losing majority interest or control. As stated, however, crowdfunding is the new Wild West, so to speak, and can lead you down paths you don't want to go. So we suggest you seek counsel on the topic and do your research. The good news is that the sector is evolving very quickly, and there are a select few organizations we would highly recommend. This is an area where we are having some great successes in. Although there are a myriad of other capital formations, I hope I gave you some ideas of the other options you have. I encourage you to check out our other videos where we discuss things like IPOs and aggressive acquisition models, or take a look at our website to learn more about obtaining capital and how it fits into a growth strategy.